Let's go. Hi. Hi, everyone. Yay. We are the two marketeers from a three-person marketing team. And Ellen has created an amazing intro to this, today's podcast, today's conversation that she hasn't shared with me yet. So Ellen, show me what you prepared. We've totally transformed the way that we do marketing at Treton 37, where we work. It's a B2B tech consulting company here in Sweden. And we've we focus so much more on demand generation and knowledge sharing on kind of a new level and different creative ways. That's always been a core, core focus of our company. So it's kind of baked into us from day one, you know, is you learn new things and you share it. So I think that's a lot of the inspiration behind why we wanted to talk about this. But also we were talking with our boss, Victoria, the CMO here at Treton. And she, it would say, beans. she like helped us reflect on how far we've come and kind yeah. of planted the seed of like, hey, this is something that, you know, a lot of people in our network are talking about and asking us. And we have been able to make a lot more noise, attract more attention. And then that brings us finally to our topic today, which is something that from pretty much day one, I would say of this three person team coming together, we're on the AI train. So that's like what we wanted to talk about a little bit today is our AI experience. And just in like a super relatable, hopefully tangible way, because none of us are, we're not developers, we're not, you know, machine learning specialists, like we're marketers and we have real problems. Like, you know, how do I create this much content in this amount of time? And oh yeah. my gosh, our budget just got cut. Um, how are we supposed to do brand awareness? We had all these big plans and now we can't do that. Anyways, I'll stop rambling. Is there anything you wanted to add to that, Sabina? Just kind of like why we wanted to share this? Yeah, my, my point of view here is that we have grown from one to a three person team almost two years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. And we joined this team from working with marketing to working in marketing. So we are three totally different people with totally different backgrounds and we really complement well each other. And we started on this AI route a little after ChatGPT came out basically, right? So like at the end of 2022, um, ChatGPT was released and it was a happy December um on 30th november but like i had a very happy december because when it came out i was in it i was ignoring calls i didn't go out like i was in it this was so fascinating to me because i am very uh tech interested so like all the innovations that are happening like let me know i want to try it out all different tools everything i'm on it the thing that surprised me the most is that when it came out it started this boom it was the new internet basically. So it was like back to the nineties. And I think you either jump on this train and join it or you stay behind. It was Mm -hmm. like a few decades ago, if you didn't have a website, you didn't exist. And everybody was like, yeah, my business is doing fine. But now if you're not using AI, you're not going to exist in a few decades more. My two cents. Yeah. I mean, I think we've all kind of taken that angle and really believe in that seeing how much has changed in the last two years. And this is probably a good point to say um, exactly what we're going to cover over the next, um, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Um, But the main points that we wanted to kind of get out there today is how and why we started using AI. So what prompted you and also our team to start exploring AI for marketing purposes in the first place? So we had big goals, big aspirations. We wanted to try many things when we adopted HubSpot, when we started more lead gen. And we were running out of time because we were a smaller team for the goals that we have set for ourselves. And that meant we need some sort of help. So it was either AI or more hands on deck. And AI was just basically released. We started playing with the tools and it really started to work well. So I really dived into it. And then I started looking for ways on how to implement this in our daily lives and convince my my teammates to use it more. Remember? Yeah, I was very skeptical. I was not one of these people that was like, AI has come to save the world. Like I 
started using chat GBT out of pure desperation. Like, honestly, because okay, I well, had yeah. an insane amount of content that needed to be created and or refined for a singular purpose. So it was a lot of like stories and client cases where there was data and text all over the place. And so for me, I was like, I do not know how I'm going to do this, let alone our team on the timeline that yeah. we have. Um, so then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to try this, you know, chat GPT situation. And at the time, I don't know if you remember this. I remember some people would reply to emails with chat GPT. And I don't know, there were just a lot of weird ways yeah. that people used it. And you could so clearly tell it was chat yeah. GPT. And that was my fear. It wasn't that it was like, you know, oh, I'm scared of the new technology. I was afraid that it was going to dilute our brand voice because I didn't understand how to use it yet. I didn't understand it holistically. And for me, that sparked a little bit of fear, which I'm a little embarrassed to say, actually, because I'm not normally the type of person who's like afraid of change. But this one True. freaked me out. I mean, it was a valid concern because we did we did talk about it in our syncs a lot. Then some emails or Slack messages that you, you saw were clearly AI generated and just had like zero personality, were very dry and very obvious. And if we were mm -hmm. to start pumping out content that looks like that, it would, like you said, dilute our brand and that would be a problem. So I think it's good to know the tools but also having the knowledge on how to use it and play on those disadvantages that we know of. So like, I still think using AI in just parts of your job is the best way to go so far, the base for our blogs and for our articles and client cases. I still think it's very important to know that it needs a human eye to look at the end result read through it and then add any any additional data info make it valuable for our readers because what happened after the ai is we talked about many times before is like there was this boom of content that was ai produced and it just like populated the whole internet and it was just articles pumping out but all of them being on the same threshold and the same level basically so what we did is when we notice that sorry i need to stop like this is a huge bug here like crawling on the wall I was like oh. i can't see it i can't see it <laughs> oh god okay <laughs> okay is it's it going so away bad? sorry yeah it's a uh, it's a bug but it, it's okay you did i was just it like it, no it's crawling the other way okay so let it live are you coming towards me no you're not okay so after this bug emergency, where were we? Okay, so when we found out that this, uh, that this kind of pumping out all the articles isn't working, we created a special workflow on how we can create content that brings value to our readers, to our customers, to our partners, but is also time effective for our smaller team. So what we did is we grabbed the transcript and the data that we had from the articles that we wanted to pump out. We used ChatGPT or Perplexity to create kind of the outline of the whole article uh, with the prompt. So create an article from this and this data. And what we did is we got like the skeletal base of the article. And then we contacted the consultants to give it some meat. So like the data, the information, the, the best parts of the article that will be the most valuable to our uh, readers. And that was very important in this part to like, to have the knowledge on how to use the AI tools to help you, but also have the wisdom to know where this line is on where it's still useful and where it's just too much. Exactly. I thought that AI would just kind of do everything by itself. Like with, with zero understanding before I did any research, I was like, okay, this is like my, my brain went to robots. <laughs> what? Um, just like, oh, and, yeah, exactly. And it, it wasn't like, oh, it's going to take my job. It was like, oh, it's going to dehumanize. I think that was kind of my big thing. But then kind of like what you were saying earlier is, what we've actually discovered, and this is kind of the second thing that we wanted to communicate in this podcast, is some of the surprises we've had as a team. 
AI has deeply enhanced our creativity. And that was very surprising to me in the best ways. And one of the tangible ways it's done this is when you do not have to use your brain power, do kind of that base work. And when I say that, what I mean is like, let's talk about content creation, specifically like creating an article. And it's like, okay, we want to address this topic. You know, we have these in-house experts and, you know, our company has this angle or perspective. And this is what we want to communicate or argue as part of our thought leadership and as part of sharing this information with our audience. So previously we would have to do, you know, an outline, talk to different stakeholders, do a lot of research um, manually. Um, but now while we still talk to different stakeholders, we, we include the people, but all of that behind the scenes work of the research and creating kind of the skeleton, if you will, of this theoretical article, we don't have to use our mental battery, so to speak. We don't have to like drain yeah. that mental battery on any of mm -hmm. those things that are, while they may not be like deeply complex or theoretical or philosophical, you know, it's, it still, it takes energy. It takes time and already super busy day. So now that we can really expedite that, we spend, let's say, that same mental load on pushing the boundaries a little bit more about like having deeper conversations with each other and with our experts to really add that deeper layer of analysis, creativity, or critique, which has ended up making our content just a lot Better. more interesting a yeah. lot more interesting and we can see that in the metrics too like our rates just you know really started going up so that's been really and you, cool and you mentioned critique there was something interesting that you did with a bunch of articles if i remember correctly do you know what i mean when it comes i know to critique? exactly what you mean can you tell i do can okay. you tell us more about that yeah this is one of my favorite like chat gpt or perplexity or you know whatever um, tool you're deciding to use that day. I was, uh, I came up with this when I was writing a piece in particular, um, that I felt very strongly about. And I was like, this is the angle. This is how we're going. It was just like, you know, dead set. And I took a step back and was like, you know, just because I think this way or feel this way does not mean it's correct. So I'm having a really hard time breaking out of my bubble or my shell and, and that fixated mindset. So how can I use AI to help me see some nuance here? So I used, I used our tools and was like, you know, create an argument against this. Show me three different points of view that disagree with, you know, what I've written. I, I mean, honestly, we're not here to talk about like, humanity, but I really think it's making me a better person. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I really do. AI is making me a better person. <laughs> Ellen 2024. Okay. That's a quote for you. It makes your, it makes you better at your job. That's for sure. But also like thinking outside of the box. Okay. There is not one universal truth to this statement that we're trying to make. That was like a big step. And when you told me that I was like, damn, that is a really great point of view and I'm going to try it more often. And this is why, why we want to talk about this, like experiences that we're having total transparency. We're not selling you anything, not a course, not nothing. We just wanted to share our experiences and how we saw this and how it helped us. And if you can take like one pro tip away from this chat today, it's going to make us the happiest campers in the world. And it's such an interesting thought that the AI we are using today, it has rapidly evolved during the past two years that's that's a fact mm -hmm. but it's the dumbest it's the dumbest it will ever be yeah. and that is just like a scarily exciting thought just imagine all the possibilities because before we used to just write prompts and it could just see text now it already has the option to see images to listen to audio and to music uh, so you can actually copy paste screenshots to it and it will help you to 
find an icon you're looking for or how should I troubleshoot this landing page on my HubSpot or whatever if you don't feel like waiting for waiting for a person who can help from their support or, or stuff like that. So it's super exciting on how it will evolve in the future. And when it comes to using it, I want to hi- highlight a really important thing that was a biggest surprise for me when I was using it is sensitive data. Uh, mm. I used to use it to help me create reports. I used to use it to like help me read some data because you can literally insert like a table format of your analytics or any other data that you might want to use. So be very, very careful what sensitive data you use. If you work in HR, if you work in finance, please be very careful what kind of data you use because it is sensitive data for a reason and use other kind of tools to use it. So I, I was surprised to find out that part of ChatGPT as well, because I found, found it very useful to be able to insert the data and have an actual conversation with ChatGPT and perplexity. So those are the two tools I use the most and video AI to help me cut the videos. So I would insert the data and have a conversation with it, like find the patterns, find what stood out uh, and have a conversation with it, how to do it better, how to insert that into our strategy. So that was a really interesting and powerful uh, tool to use to make it better because usually it would, to find patterns like this, it would take hours. So this can literally save you a lot of time when you're doing some data research. And like, you probably all know this, but your decisions in your business need to be data backed no matter how great you think an ad will perform if you put in a Star Wars quote or something in it and you find it's hilarious, that's not necessarily the case that your audience will think the same that because that's something that happened to us. Um, So like go with, like make your decisions with data focus and that's something that AI can help you with as well. But please be mindful of your sensitive data, what you share with AI. One thing that I'll tag on to that, that you've been doing really well, Sabina, is not only using AI to help with the data analysis, but also to document it. Because over time, especially in this B2B marketing world, you know, it takes time to start seeing those trends and to start seeing like, okay, what story is this data telling me? And so being able to have very clear documentation that you can look back on and reflect on on a yearly basis or quarterly basis, that's been really helpful just to have like a quick snapshot, low effort, but it just pays off in such a big way. And that brings me to our final topic, which I have a very short answer for. So I'm going to ask the question and then give my super short answer and then hand the mic over to you. And so the question is, how do we stay up to date? Um, And you guys, I'm not kidding. My answer is Sabina. Like Sabina is the one who keeps me and our team up to date. She is on it like nobody's business. And yes, you know, there are a ton of resources that we love, but Sabina, yeah, take it, take it away because you are my go-to for all of the latest and greatest when it comes to AI and marketing. Okay. Total transparency. I find the most useful tips and tricks on social media. So primarily TikTok and you can hate on TikTok as much as you want. But TikTok is a great platform to find tips and tricks for anything you might want doing. Uh, There are also quite a few interesting uh, subreddits on this topic as well. So like you have real time data. So and and that's just like brilliant. But I follow two AI focused uh, groups more and that's Girls in Marketing. Uh, Founder is Olivia May Hanlon and she is a chef's kiss. I, I told you about this program that they're having lately, Alan, and I've just been in awe. I kind of came across their channel, like girls in marketing by like by mistake or probably not their marketers. I think they targeted me. It was not a mistake. There's no yeah. way. <laughs> so they're really good at their job because target audience reach. I was like, this is amazing. This is the sh-. So they're like mm, 10 out of 10. So I joined their uh, three week uh, program. It was 
it was filled with amazing speakers, so many knowledge, uh, knowledge nuggets. And it was just like pure joy. I intend to follow them like religiously from this, this day forward. So shout out to Olivia here. Um, and then the other one is Marketing AI Institute. Uh, I joined a few of, of their webinars and they, they are mostly free. Uh, so Girls in Marketing and Marketing AI Institute have payable programs and courses that you can join. All the info and data and pro tips that you can get, get from the free versions as well is really invaluable. So, and then if you play around a little bit with AI, you will be set to go. Because something I want to add here is that this is like a new generation of AI marketing. Uh, and by generation, I don't mean like the Gen Z uh, and, and the others that are coming behind us, but like this generation of marketing employees or marketeers that are including AI in their workloads and just performing better, have more time to do creative tasks, have more time to do strategic planning because they have the help of AI on their side because they know how to use them and they have the wisdom to decide when to use it and how. So yeah, what you just said is so true and it's also a reflection of society in general when we look at how things are digitizing. And Love it's it. like yeah. the modern B2B and probably B2C, but I'm not gonna speak to that As because well. that, that's not my specialty. Um, it's a fact. But the, the modern marketer has to keep up with the needs, expectations, desires, assumptions, so on and so forth of their consumer. And yeah. all of us are living in this space of like rapid digitization. And so we are taking part in that and experiencing it in a different way along with our, our buyers for our company, but you know, it may be different depending on what industry you're in, but this, this is just the way it is. And it's, you know, my new favorite term, um, agile marketing, you know, it's like, we're just using the new technology. We're not experts in it by any means. And I promise you, we're making a million mistakes along the way, but we're learning, yeah. we're growing, we're figuring it out. And you know, this is just the way it is. Cause when it comes down to it, you like, nobody knows hundred percent of the time what they're doing. I think sometimes you just, you got to test, you got to iterate to get there. <laughs> yeah. It's trial and error, but it's like trial and error. It's easier if you know what you're trying to do. So not, don't go like full force. Like if we fail it, be, be careful where you do trial and error for, but yeah, like here, I want to mention the, an interesting quote from Paul Rutzer, the CEO and founder of marketing AI Institute. And he mm -hmm. mentioned in one of his webinars and he said, don't wait for technology or the world around you to get smarter, be the, the person who gets smarter with it. So don't stay in the status quo, get into it. Now, if you missed your opportunity to be on top of the, on top of the story, when internet came out, this is your opportunity. Now AI has been around for ages, but like this type of AI that you can use in marketing and in your business, it's been out for two years. There's still loads of time for you to get up to speed and stay up to speed as, as you go forward. Exactly. Cool. Well, if you've made it this far, thanks for listening. Let us know <laughs> you if made this it is this helpful. Far. <laughs> thanks for listening to our ramblings. Thank you very much. Exactly. Well, I do hope people will take at least something out of this. If it's like something that will save you one minute per week, then we did our part and that would make me super happy. Yep. Then it's worth it. Yep. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.